Yahweh, Kah Lima, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so in pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled Is Modern Warfare in the Bible? Is Modern Warfare in the Bible? I'm not going to make this long. My voice is very dried out. But I'm going to briefly go through this. <coughs> the uh, apostles have already covered it. So I'm going to go ahead and start here. First of all, let me go to this man's photo. So this man here was called the Supreme Warlord at the out at the outset of World War One. <coughs> at the outset of World War One, Kaiser Wilhelm II. And his bloodlines connect back to the fake British monarch. <coughs> So he initiated the entry into World War I. And we're going to read about that. And he's described as a star fallen. Because not only did Germany lose the war, but he had to step down from his throne. So we're going to go into it. Revelations, <clears throat> excuse me, Revelations chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Same man. So that bottomless pit is Europe, where we know they have to import resources. They're not self-sufficient or organic, so they have to go out and conquer, colonize to get their resources. So this bottomless pit is Europe. That's also, we'll go ahead and get it. Let me get it in... um. Revelations 20. Revelations 20. Re <clears throat> Excuse me. But the Revelations chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years so this is Europe and we know that Europe was in the so called dark ages a thousand years when the when the Israelites were in rulership of Europe well, that dragon, that devil or Satan is talking about the Edomites, more specifically, the Roman Empire. So now we're in a revised Roman Empire. So they were in chains for about a thousand year period. The, the medieval or dark, medieval or dark ages. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go back. Let's go more into that pit. Let's go to 2nd 
Ezra's 15 and 25. Second Ezra's chapter 15, verse 24. And of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit. And of all the flowers thereof, one lily. <coughs> one pit, a landmass. Now we know that the motherland is Jerusalem. But this pit that Revelations chapter 9 is talking about is Europe. It is a bottomless pit. So this is not the blessed landmass. So this is Europe where they go out and rape, rob, murder, and pillage for their resources. Let's read it again. And of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit, and of all the flowers thereof, one lily, and of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled thee one river, and of all built cities, thou hast hallowed Zion unto thyself. So he has a favorite people, the children of Israel, that are going to be restored back into the Holy Land. Israel. Revelations chapter 9, I'm going to go to verse 2. And he, and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So that he is Germany, which opened entry or access into World War I. In Europe. So this man was called the Supreme Warlord, Kaiser Wilhelm II. Kaiser goes back to Caesar, which goes back to Khazar. These are Edomites. When it says that there arose a smoke that's going into the carnage of World War One. I'm going to look that up, by the way. One moment. Let's go here. World War One. And that smoke gets into the massive devastation that killed upwards of 16 million people on the earth. Are some images. <clears throat> So getting into the carnage, the death and destruction. Let's go back. And this is that he or that angel that's fallen from heaven that we're reading about. Okay, let's keep going. Verse three. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and into them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. So this is where John on the island of Patmos an ancient man of the Lord, a prophet is using ancient terminology to describe a future modern battlefield. 
locus. <coughs> That's the physical image. Looks like a what? An airplane. Right here. And then they have tail gunners. It's like a scorpion. Its weapon, its defense is in its tail. The military still use this term today. A tail gunner. Let's read it again. <coughs> And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. So we saw that. Oh, he's describing it using the best, the best way that he knows how. Ancient terminology. like unto a scorpion, a tail gunner. Verse 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of the Most High in their foreheads. So the elect seed are being preserved. <laughs> I was talking about the righteous trees of the Most High, the elect of Jacob, so-called Negroes, Native Americans, Latinos, and Hispanics that survived that time frame between 1914 and 1918. A protective hedge. The elect are sealed Verse 5, one moment. Verse 5, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Weapons of war. And part of those torments on those planes is the tail gunner. A scorpion's weapon is in his tail. That five months is talking about the time frame of World War I from 1914 to 1918. In 1918, he fell from his throne. He had to abdicate his throne. And that happened in 1918. That's why when we read in verse 1 that I saw a star fall. Kaiser Wilhelm II. Let's look up that word abdicate. Abdicate. Renounce one's throne of a monarch. So his bloodlines are connected back to the fake British royal monarch. See, in 1918, Kaiser Wilhelm, in 1918, Kaiser Wilhelm abdicated as German emperor, which goes back to Kaiser or Caesar. Wow, check this out. Turn down. So we read that we saw a star fall. Turn down. Called the Supreme Warlord. Let's keep reading. Can't make this long with a dry voice. Verse 6. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. So during this time, you had amputees, you had people that were severely injured from war, but we also saw the introduction of morphine. 
and more advanced field medicine. Matter of fact, let's look this up. This might not be the right word <clears throat> when they introduce morphine. Yep. So they were using <clears throat> different types of painkiller during that time. Like morphine, opioids, heroin. Let's look up morphine, World War One. Here we go. Throughout history, intoxicants were an were an important part of the war experience. The First World War was by no means an exception in that respect. They were both prescribed by <clears throat> both prescribed by military authorities. So these men were being numbed up, and many were seeking death rather than to live through that type of torment. Let's go back or six. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. So they were being preserved on the battlefield through great torment and becoming amputees. Verse 7, and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. Oh, I pulled this up. I heard Elder Apostle Tahar mention it. Oh, this is what they're wearing. These are the crowns, these German helmets. that they wore back then on World War I. And John described them as crowns. And that's what they look like. They made to go on your head. Let's go back to that. So these, these aircraft were armored like armored battle horses for battle. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. Oh, he's seeing planes that are battle hardened. <coughs> that are <coughs> that are being manned, so to speak. Man aerial craft that are armored. Verse, verse eight. And they had hair as the hair of women and their teeth or as the teeth of lions. See, no, I'm going to pull that back up. It had what? Hair 
as the hair of women. And if you look at this, it even looks like a lion's tooth. But also, their machine gun is like a lion's teeth. They're weapons of war. Not to mention, when you look at these crowns, it has a lion's tooth on it. And the way these were designed, go back, they would put hair on these helmets. The Imperial Army. There's another image. Let's go back. I'm not going to make this long. Verse 10. Verse 10. And they had tails. I'm sorry. Let's go back to verse 9. Verse 8. And they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were blessed. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. That's the engines that you hear of these airplanes. And back then, they had the old motors. That sounds like a loud old lawnmower when you crank it up. And uh, Elder Apostle Tahar mentioned that they did not have the sophisticated muffler system that we have today, or muffler that helps to muffle the noise. So it sounds like many armored horses or armored cavalry in battle array. Verse 9, verse 10. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. So World War I, 1914 to 1918. And once again, Elder Apostle Gabar brought this out. Tail gunners. So a scorpion's weapon or defense is in its tail. And it's amazing that the military still use this term today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go to verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon, means destroyer. Who are the destroyers of the earth? The Edomites. More specifically, Kaiser Wilhelm II that opened up the entry into World War I. So he was called the Supreme Warlord. A destroyer. Verse 12. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. <clears throat> World War I is past. World War II came 19, well, <laughs> the Germans started it in 1939. But the U.S. did not enter World War II into 1941. World War II ended in 1945. So woe means destruction. Verse 12, again, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes 
more hereafter. World War II is coming. Here are some images. That's coming hereafter. Matter of fact, there's an indicator in here somewhere. One moment. I want to get right to it. Right here. Verse 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. And them that sat on them. Having breastplates of fire. And of jacinth And brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. So missiles carry the payload in its head. That's where the destruction is. And they are like horsemen in battle array. And believe it or not, the Third World War, angels are going to be guiding these munitions, these missiles. Angels will guide them. So they look like soldiers or horsemen riding armored horses in battle array. I mean, look at these images. They're in formation. So modern warfare is in the Bible. I mean, look at these. So the head of the missile is what kills you. Two hundred million of these are going to be fired in the last war. I'm going to read another part here. Yeah, right here. Verse 18. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. The Edomites are going to be virtually annihilated, but a remnant is going to be left behind. To go into captivity. That's the elites. Fire issued out of their mouths. That's in the head. That's where it's armed at. The head of the missile. For their power. See? For their power is in their mouth. And in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents. And had heads. And with them, they do hurt. So what's armed is the head. And upon impact, it detonates. And they have tails. So they look like flying serpents. Fiery flying serpents. Here we go. Ancient prophet using basic terminology back in the days of old to describe a future modern battlefield. Okay. Let's go from there. We read that. Revelations 11, verse 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. So this third war is going to escalate to nuclear destruction. So it's going to be most devastating. 
Oh, where's this nuclear blast? Let's get this. Isaiah 34. Remember, we read in the third part of men that are going to be destroyed. Well, let's go to Isaiah 34, verse 4. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. How are the heavens being rolled together as a scroll, like a nuclear detonation? Okay, let's keep going. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Let's go back to um, verse 9, somewhere we read that. Yeah, verse 9. Verse 18, by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. A modern warfare. This Bible is amazing. By the fire <laughs> and by the smoke, which leads to this of the Third World War. And we saw a small example of this in World War II. The atomic bomb. Fat man and little boy dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki on Japan, 1945. Modern warfare is in the Bible. And the heavens are going to roll together like a scroll. That's going to slay the third part of men. Idumia. We read it in Isaiah 34. So anyway. <clears throat> what else did I have here? We got that. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. All praises to Yahweh. Ahashem. Yahweh Shai. Ahashem. Or Kakadash. Barakatham is modern warfare in the Bible. Yes, it's prophesied. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwame Sharala and Abad Babao. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.